Americans for Fair Taxation presents the Weekly Chairman's Report, written by Steve Hayes, President of Americans for Fair Taxation, and recorded by Bob Paxton, a volunteer with the Florida Fair Tax Educational Association. And now, this week's Chairman's Report. Hello, I'm Bob Paxton with the AFFT Chairman's Report for Friday, September 27th, 2024. We won't tax this portion of your income, so how do you like me now? This week's Chairman's Report is guest written by Randy Fisher, an AFFT Vice President and Board Member. Each presidential election cycle, there are plans and promises of meaningful changes to our antiquated income payroll tax system. The premise of all these promises and plans is that we're all confined to perpetually persisting within the very income tax system that apparently needs to be fixed like clockwork every four years. The many promises that our political representatives make often sound enticing or common sense by themselves, but only in a world where the income tax system is indefinitely ingrained in our nation's fabric. Former President Trump has proposed four proposals to amend our income tax system, and they make quite a good bit of sense. First, the idea that our elderly citizens' Social Security benefits should not be taxed is a no-brainer. The Social Security tax dollars that our retirees have contributed to the system via payroll withholdings over a lifetime of hard work have already been taxed when they were originally earned. Taxing a portion of one's Social Security benefits now is double taxation, and that's ridiculous on its face. So this, of course, makes complete sense. Second, not taxing our hard-working wage earners who work for tips and gratuities is inherently logical. Often, when performing labor, like I did in high school as a golf caddy, the hourly wages are meager or non-existent and are often seasonal. This means that any incremental tax that we pay on our tips is like salt in a wound. These workers are not making very much already, and even these alms for the poor, these bits of gratuities received in their cup of earnings, ends up with the government's hand reaching in for its fair share. So, by all means, let's end taxation on our service workers' tip income. Third, eliminating taxation on our hardworking American workers' overtime pay is brilliant. Our workforce is one of the most committed and hardworking forces the world has ever seen. When overtime is necessary for increased productivity or to meet a boost in customer demand, workers often feel like putting in the extra time is not worth it. Overtime earnings are often taxed at higher rates, and even if they earn time and a half, workers feel slighted with measurably higher tax withholdings on overtime pay. This is a very common sense proposal. Lastly, lowering our corporate income tax rate from 21% to 15% has been proposed. President Trump commented in a recent interview with Trace Gallagher how the U.S. would be a tax haven and companies would rush to this country if it had a lower 15% corporate income tax rate. On its face, this also makes absolute sense. So, what do all these admittedly good ideas have in common? These initiatives all assume that we must continually exist in our soul-eroding income tax regime. Let's free ourselves from the shackles of this income tax system. The fair tax has the same ideas as above, but even better. The fair tax does not tax tip income, social security income, or overtime income. Furthermore, the fair tax does not tax corporate income at all. Lowering that 21% corporate income tax rate to 15% is good, but lowering it to zero is infinitely better. In fact, The fair tax will not tax any income from any source at all. Let that sink in for a moment. Now, these four relatively small but good ideas are galvanizing and exciting the electoral base. Imagine what would happen if we proposed to end income taxes on every single bit of income, be it individual or corporate income, period. The U.S. would indeed become an immediate global tax haven, as mentioned above, but at an exponentially larger and almost unimaginable scale. So, the question is, can we bring ourselves to think outside the tight, uncomfortable, always in need of repair income tax box that we've all been trapped in since 1913? As one past president was fond of saying at campaign rallies, yes we can. In conclusion, Randy clearly shows the benefits of the fair tax and why it's a winning strategy with the public. The fair tax gives each of us the promised benefits and much more. 
The choice is easy. Do we want a system for funding the federal government that is so simple that everyone can understand it, that shows the cost of the federal government on every retail receipt so we can all understand what we're paying, that helps U.S. companies compete with foreign competitors, that keeps jobs in the United States rather than exporting them to other countries, that permanently establishes the solvency of Social Security and Medicare, and is the largest transfer of power from D.C. to the people since the Constitution was adopted. Now, D.C. is ignoring the one real solution that allows us to remain citizens and not subjects, the fair tax. The fair tax is simple, it's non-invasive, but most of all, it works. The solution? Pass the fair tax. Now, why would D.C. pass the fair tax and give up an almost unlimited source of donations? Well, they won't, at least not voluntarily. The only way they will is if the rest of us demand it. Isn't it time to end this ludicrous tax collection system and the IRS along with it? Now, there's going to be a vote on the fair tax in the House of Representatives. We now have the opportunity to force all members of the House to show where they stand. They can vote for the President income payroll tax system, or they can vote for the fair tax. They can support the corrupt income tax in the IRS, or they can vote to eliminate it. It can't be any simpler than that. They can continue hiding the true cost of their government, or they can pass the fair tax and show everyone the true cost of government on every retail receipt. Finally, they can support the largest transfer of power from government to the people, the fair tax, or they can vote against it. Now, if members think the fair tax needs to be amended to address a problem, they can propose the change. Don't let them get away with rejecting the entire bill because it has a perceived flaw that can be easily addressed. And don't think for an instant there aren't any flaws in the income tax. Help us bring about real tax reform and stop future IRS abuses. By contributing or investing $10.40 a month, you help provide a financial base to Americans for fair taxation. Now, if you can make larger contributions slash investments, these will be used not for salaries as we're all volunteers, but for the needed updates to our economic studies, which will be vital for all future years. Please go to fairtax.org to invest in AFFT and help us pass the fair tax. It's an investment in your and your family's future. This has been the Weekly Chairman's Report, written by Steve Hayes, President of Americans for Fair Taxation. Check back every week for news and information about the fair tax and learn why the fair tax should replace our antiquated federal income tax system. If you'd like to receive a copy of the Chairman's Report in your inbox every week, sign up at fairtax.org. 